Hey boys, Pedos, and today I'm going to bring you a video about the, uh, mainly about the behind the scenes, and I will be getting 92 agility in this video, unless something goes horribly wrong. Uh, got 138 million total XP earlier on today, so that was, that's quite nice now, isn't it? But, uh, uh, onto the behind the scenes, we'll just get that all nicely lined up so I don't have to keep clicking everywhere. Right. So, I'll begin the course run. The first thing they talked about in the, um, behind the scenes, which uh, I'm not sure whether they've actually specified whether it's going to be in like chronological order, but I'm pretty sure that the first one on the article is the one that's coming out first, and that is the Tears of Gothics. Uh, Go with the Flow, as it's called, but it's basically just a graphical rework, as far as I can tell. Um, oh no, sorry, there is actually um, more, more XP, as far as I can tell. Yeah, you get more XP. Um, Plus also, if you are, this is a quote, if you're blessed with 80 mining and crafting and you've completed the Tears of Gothic's quest, you'll also have a brand new option of making a bigger ornate bowl to catch those precious tears, meaning yet more XP, up to five times as much as you'd got pre-update for your lowest skill. So, that's, uh, that should be pretty interesting. I haven't done Tears of Guffix. I thought it was a like a pretty high level quest, but it's not that much. I might end up doing it around the time that the update comes out. But um, um, I don't remember the uh, XP before this update being that bad anyway. So this is probably going to be quite a lot of XP uh, in reality. So it's definitely going to be one of those weekly things that it's worth doing. Like um, you probably should do penguins every week, but I can never get around to doing it. Uh, definitely I was doing a troll invasion. There's some stuff about distraction diversions in a later on thing. So if I just go down to the next part. Dungeoneering XP increases free players and members. Would I hope so. Um, and basically what it's doing is, right now, obviously, the way they want the XP to be um, kind of set for Dungeoneering is if you've got five people, you're getting the most XP, and then four, three, two, one, like that. But right now, it's kind of not very well balanced, and if you're on a five-man team, you're getting way more than if you're on a three-man team. And this update, uh, they set about to uh, balance that, and they say, Solo XP at high levels can now reach figures of 350k experience per hour, which, knowing Jagex, is probably what you can do if you're not really trying that hard. If you remember every time Jagex quote an experience per hour, or they say how long something's going to take, they're always miles off. So, I wouldn't be surprised if we can get 500k an hour solo now, which would be great, because I usually engineer solo, and quite a lot of people do. And uh, it's going to make it a much more viable thing, because, um, like I was saying, in general, um, whilst Dungeon does speed up past about 85 into the 90s, uh, solo, it's still not very fast if you're in a one or two man team, you definitely need to be in your four or five mans, or else you're just not going to get the same amount of experience. So hopefully this update will actually work, it won't be a complete letdown. Next part of this is the Ariane, Ariane, don't know how you say her name, don't give a fuck about role playing quests, rune mysteries and rune memories. So isn't Rune Mystery is already a quest. Um, is a replacement for the old Rune Mystery quest. So it must be a fancy new one. Probably not going to be that interesting. I mean, they did a rework of um, another quest recently. I can't remember what it's called, but it it wasn't that good. It wasn't anything amazing. But the uh, the Rune Memories quest. Here's the little. Uh, they're stupid, like. Uh, ridiculously phrased things they have at the end, it's like rewards for this rune rific extravaganza. So look forward to the rune rific extravaganza. Includes new titles, holy shit. New mage outfits, holy shit. Uh, a new mage weapon for low level players, so that's going to be used. And rune essence rewards that grow as your rune crafting level increases. Now that could be interesting. It could be something like um, you can get like double or triple rune essence the higher your rune crafting level is. Something like that. That could actually be useful. Um, 
probably going to make Runescence crash though, but uh, yeah. In addition, there will also be hidden rewards for high level players, probably like they did with that um, What's Mine Is Yours quest, where afterwards you can go, I don't know, craft some blood runes and you get like a 20k XP bonus or some, something like that. Um, Gravestone Improvements. Another update this month, inspired by player feedback, is an update to the gravestones in game, or more specifically, the way in which you interact with the gravestones after an unfortunate account of death. That should be that should be wonderful. Um, Re-equip and take all. That's the. Uh, uh, no, I'll start that sentence again. They've added a take all and re-equip all button so um, obviously that means that in the past when you found your gravestone you've got to try and right click under the gravestone and pick up everything that you can but now you can just right click it, re-equip all, all the gear that you had on you before will now be automatically re-equipped and then you can instantly refill your uh, inventory again that's quite helpful for um, bossing um, Happened to me quite a lot when I was doing Frost Dragons. You'd get there and you'd end up leaving half your stuff because it's too much hassle to actually, um, you know, get at it. Uh, really quick. Right. Uh, next part is Make X. Free players and members. Perhaps the largest update this month. Uh, really? Do you not think the quests are bigger than this stupid little interface thing? Anyway. And certainly something that every player will use on a daily basis is a complete overhaul to the interfaces and systems used when making items. It takes all the information about item production, experience, value, grand exchange and alchemy prices, skill and item requirements and presents them in one place. This means you won't have to frantically check through all the skill guides or websites just to work out how to train those precious skills. It also includes some brand new features as well as maintaining the older ones like being able to clean inventory loads of herbs that is fucking useful because you can it's a nice way to make money a friend of mine got 91 herb lore by cleaning herbs made a nice bit of money off it as well but that's probably going to crash the cleaning herbs market as it were but um, I suppose that would be interesting but like oh you're going to turn a gold bar into a gold bracelet that's going to change the price from what, however it is to whatever it's going to be it's going to be like useful but not that useful like if you're going to be like crafting something or whatever for a long amount for a long amount of time for like a large quantity of that item you're going to have done the research anyway you're going to you're not going to uh wait for the fucking dialogue update to come along next part combat academy and beta access for all and this combat academy thing they did a behind the scenes video thing on it's about how you get XP rewards for your actual account if you take part in this combat academy. And I'll, I'll wait to see what they are, because if it's like 20k strength XP, don't really care. It is worded as generous XP rewards, but no, in Jagex that's about 5k XP. Um, but yeah, a lot of people have been saying that the evolution of combat seems a bit complicated. And it's definitely going to help a lot of people understand it. I personally haven't even tried to understand the beta when it comes along. I'm just going to be like rolling my face around in it. That's a really weird expression. What the fuck did I say that? Um, I'm just going to be confused, is what I should have said. Um, so, in terms of that, that seems about it. But the, uh, the last and clearly the most important one uh, that I think everyone is most interested in is the Solomon's General Store and School of Fortune updates. Yeah. Right. Uh, the first item is the Dragon Keepsake Box. So that's probably going to cost you about twenty pounds or thirty dollars, something like that. Um, basically, what it lets you do is it, it lets you turn any item into a cosmetic reskin for its usual slot. Um, so, by the sounds of it, what that means is you can get yourself a party hat, and oh, level up ninety-two. You can get yourself a party hat, and then you can, using this magical little box, you can make that party hat, so that level target to 99, long haul ahead of me, you can set that party hat as your default headwear, so you then never have to wear that party hat, party hat again. Is that going to take the party hat out of the game? Because rares are going to rock it, if that's how it works. Like, if you reskin it, takes that party hat, 
out of the game, but you've always got it on your head, that's going to... Actually, thinking about it, it will probably put prices up because obviously it's going to be taking res out of the game, but it means that there's no need to ever um, buy more than one rare. That's or like buy more than one of the same kind of rare, if you know what I mean. Because that means that like if you've bought yourself a Santa hat, for example, I have a financial interest in a sa in Santa hats, and then you do this thing where you have this cosmetic shit on your head, so you never have to buy a sand hat ever again. You've just got it permanently. I don't know. It's probably going to make uh, rares go up in price, uh, at least initially, and then depending on exactly how it works, like if it's reclaimable or whatever, it'll probably be, uh, be a bit different. But um, I don't know. If it's a mechanism for taking uh, these rares out of the game, I think that's a good thing, because as much as um, the rares are like this often said that they're too integral to the economy because like, if you want to hold mass amounts of money you're going to buy a blue party hat or any kind of party hat really just so you don't have to have loads of um, coins and shards and I don't know, you could store your money in vials if you want but that's not particularly clever um, so yeah I'm kind of looking forward to that, I probably won't use it but I'm interested to see what's going to happen there uh, later this month Solomon's also stocking the first hero packs, which include costume and weapon reskins and teleport animations fashioned after iconic RuneScape heroes. They used and twice in that sentence, made it very difficult to read. With these, you can rock that Ozen Panache, I guess not how you say that word, I'm not illiterate, I can't even read, or wield magic with be beguiling, I know how to speak, I just don't know how to speak these words, beguiling style, like whatever that woman's name is who has that quest that's coming out. In the month as well, Ariane. Ariane. I don't give a sh I really couldn't care less. Anyway, the next and most important one, like I said, this is the real, the real big update of the month, possibly of the year. Yelps is getting in on the action too. In case you're not down with your uh, RuneScape lore, he's actually the name of the uh, goblin on the screen of fortune don't know why they decided to even give him a name because no one gives a shit but anyway with replay tokens for your favorite D&D's distraction diversions cropping up on the screen of fortune another monthly run at troll invasion question mark an extra weekly bash at the circus or the newly reworked tears of tears of guffix question mark don't mind if I do exclamation mark it's because it's like a dialogue it's not like a rapport on the updates it's a conversation with the reader um, that should be interesting. I mean, I'd rather have another go at Troll Invasion than another go at the fucking uh, Tears of Guffix. Because uh, I did my Troll Invasion on, uh, yeah, on on yesterday. Oh no, the day before, I think. I did it last. Two days ago. The first of the months when I did it. And I didn't do very well. I got to like wave 11 because I just like wasn't paying attention and got like, comboed by one of the big melee dudes and uh, a ranger. And I still got like. Um, I think it was 70k agility XP. That might be a lie, actually. Well, I'll go down. I'll say it's 40k XP. And if you can do that twice, possibly more than twice in a month, that's going to be pretty awesome. I mean, I'd prefer it if it was some kind of like blank ticket, and it was like choose one you want to get another go at. Because then I'd go for try invasion every time. But I suppose. Means they can add more items to the game if they uh, put it as other shit. Um, but yeah, that's it for the behind the scenes. Uh, another thing I want to talk about is obviously my Santa hat, my agility levels, all the shit that's the future of my account right now. Um, the Santa hat's been going up recently. Today, specifically, it's gone down. But in terms of like over the week, it's gone up. Um, like this morning, it was a no, yesterday night, it was a 145, that's down to 140, 141, but it's still it's going up in a positive trend. And a price that I'd like to sell it at would be around 170, but I'm just going to see when it starts to start dipping down. And if that update comes out with a whole keepsake box and it does make res go up, I could be looking to sell it for even more than that. And the plan still is to get 95 prayer and then see what cash I've got left. If I have got enough left for 99 prayer, 
I probably will go for it just so it's another 99 that I've got. Um, but even if I do have somehow like the 300 mil required to get Herblore, I'm probably not going to get Herblore, Herblore first. Because people say, oh, you shouldn't get Prayer before Herblore because the, the overloads are really good. And I know the overloads are amazing. What is it like? You go up... Um, I can't even remember. You go up loads of levels though, and especially if you're maxed, you're gonna be doing ridiculous amounts of damage. But super potions, super attack, super defense, super strength, they're all right. They'll do. They put me for about seven levels now. I think it's about ten when you're um at ninety nine. And I'd rather like when I go back to making money, uh when I've just when I've got the skills that I want. Um I'd rather have turmoil and soul split and supers than um, having to spend loads of money on getting overloads and having like chivalry and piety so that's just the way I'm thinking of it um, really quickly I'll show you a progress update on my um, addiction to body runes unless of course I haven't entered my pin nope don't have entered my pin but there you go um, bought 124,108 out of 1 million body runes. The reason for that is, you know, I was telling you that in the past it's always been, oh, if it's like 500k over 10 mil, 500k body runes. No one really minds. That was what it was, and I was hovering around the kind of 9 mil, 10 mil area, and then on the first month I thought, do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to be a bit risky. I'm going to sell my sand hat. Buy Bandos and Dragon Claws, go do Trial Invasion, but then I wasn't looking at the screen, so I didn't do very well in Trial Invasion. Sold the uh, Claws and Bandos for a profit, about 1 mil profit, I was happy with that, I was like, right, so I can buy my Santa hat pack for the same price. Made a mil, happy days. Lost about 3 mil on a Santa hat. I'm, I'm going to guess people were manipulating the chat because. In case you didn't know, the R Quark friends chat, R Quark, however you want to say it. Um, and basically people just say what they've got as a sell price for uh, any rare. And as much as it's a bit obvious if you say Sand Hat, 27 bill, people are going to know it's a bit bullshit. But if over a one hour period people just start going, it starts off at 140 and people go, Santa, 140.5, and then 10 minutes later, 141, it seems legit. But anyway, I lost a bit of money on that, so I thought, pocket I'll buy a million body rings. It's gonna take about a week to buy. So I'm not gonna be doing anything with the money in that time. So yeah. In the words of Jay Z, YOLO. But yes, I was gonna show you my uh, shitty bank, but seeing as how there be absolutely no reason to do that. I'm just gonna uh, end the video here. So if you like the video, please give it a like, try and subscribe and I'll see you soon.